So we get asked all the time about special tests for the hip joint. And so here are my top five tips to help you get the most out of them for your clinical practice. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So let's dive straight in with top tip number one, which is use the single leg stand test for a gluteal tendinopathy. So this condition is all about patients who have an irritation to the glute med and glute min tendons. And these two tendons insert into the greater trochanter of the femur. And therefore, that's where we expect patients to present with pain if they have this condition. So the test is super simple. It's a single leg stand test on the patient's affected leg for between 30 to 60 seconds and we're looking to see if it reproduces their pain around the greater trochanter specifically. If it does, then it's a positive result and suggests that our patient does have a gluteal tendinopathy. So why do I love this test so much? Number one, it's super simple. But number two, because it's really reliable in practice. Lequesne et al. confirmed that it has 100% sensitivity and 97% specificity when it comes to gluteal tendinopathy. And the link for that paper is in the description below. Make sure you use it in your practice. Top tip number two. This one is about Ober's test. And the tip is, don't use it. And the reason we don't suggest using it is because it doesn't really add that much to our clinical practice or our clinical picture when we're trying to diagnose. So it used to be thought of that this test could diagnose ITB tightness. Now, the ITB is a massive structure. It's a fascia, it's not a muscle. And therefore, can it actually be tight? So if we're not that really bothered about ITB tightness, I wouldn't suggest really using it in practice. In fact, when I do see clinicians use it, it tends to cloud their judgment more than anything else. Now, some might say, well, no, it might help you diagnose a gluteal tendinopathy. I would much rather that you use something like the single leg stand test or other tests, which I'm gonna go through later, which gives you much more confidence in diagnosing that condition. Top tip number three, I would suggest that you learn Faber's and Fadir's test. So. These are both tests used to look for hip joint pathology and they're tests which are passively done by the therapist. So first, Faber's, F-A-B-E-R. F for flexion, A-B for abduction, E-R for external rotation. So that's the position that we're gonna bring our patient's leg in with the patient lying supine and you can see the individual components of the handling there. Now for Deer's test, for DIA, F-A-D-I-R, stands for flexion, adduction, internal rotation. Once again, that is the movement that the therapist does for the patient. And again, with these, we're looking for hip joint pathologies in particular. So when I talk about using these tests for hip joint pathologies, I might be thinking about bone or cartilage issues like osteoarthritis, perhaps at a push, a labral tear. And probably the main one that I use them for is femoroacetabular impingement. Now the idea, as you can imagine from the positions of the tests, is that they stress quite a few different structures at the hip joint. And therefore, the way in which I use them is if the test is negative, then it may well help me rule out a hip joint pathology because I would imagine that a hip joint pathology would be irritated with those tests. Now, the other useful thing about Faber's test is that it can provoke pain at the lumbar spine or the sacroiliac joint. And that is a good thing because it means that if there's no pain at the hip joint with these tests, but it does bring on pain at the lumbar spine or the SIJ, we might think a little bit more about those specific areas when it comes to our patient's problem. Top tip number four, do use resisted internal and external rotation of the hip. Now, you can see these being done up here. The main reason in which I use these is I'm looking at the strength or for dysfunction of the rotators of the hip. And primarily, we're talking about the gluteal muscles here. So, as you can see, with both of these, we'll bring our patient's hip into 90 degrees of flexion and then provide an isometric resistance point for either internal or external rotation. Now, the reason I do these tests so often is because, quite frankly, 
I do want to know how strong the glutes are. The glutes, the external and internal rotators, are really important for dynamic stability of the hip joint. And so if I find that there's a weakness in those muscles, I have that justification for why I'm going to be providing my patient with strengthening exercises. And there are so many different hip pathologies that do benefit from glute strengthening. Therefore, I use them all the time. And top tip number five, potentially the most important one, never underestimate the power of your subjective assessment. This is so important. And before mastering orthopedic tests at the hip, I would make sure you understand some of the key subjective signs when it comes to different conditions. Let's go through some of them. So for example, osteoarthritis. Naturally, we expect this more as age increases in our patients. We're looking for stiffness, particularly in the morning, that lasts less than 60 minutes. And we expect some range of movement restrictions that will impact their function, particularly in terms of flexion with rotation. So for example, patients having difficulty putting their shoes and socks on in the morning, or patients having difficulty getting in and out of a car. Next, femoroacetabular impingement. So we generally tend to expect this in the younger age group, particularly a very sporty person. We also are looking for deep-seated groin pain in conjunction with clicking, clunking, or a feeling of giving way. And for example, gluteal tendinopathy. Here, this is more common in women than men, particularly in the middle ages, and we're looking for signs of overload for those gluteal tendons. Has there been a recent increase in exercise that the patient hasn't been doing before? Have they suddenly increased the amount of running they're doing? And of course, crucially, we're looking for that pain around the greater trochanter. So hopefully you can see with these examples, knowing that information first is absolutely crucial before deciding what tests you're going to do. So guys, I really hope this video has helped. If it has, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribe to our channel for loads of things about the hip, but also check out Clinical Physio membership. Details in the description below. Our membership platform has so many resources to help with your physiotherapy skills. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.